So we came back two days early. And then the whole time, and then the whole time I've had sciatic pain. That's terrible. It's a nice band, but it's not as comfortable as my Ford pickup. Well, you just get used to the way that you have different people. You have different seats. All right, the bell has rung. Uh, just a couple of announcements before we go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Uh, if you haven't read the email messages and everything, Arthel and Ovita's niece passed away. Uh, she had cancer. Uh, <coughs> Debbie tells me that her sister's husband has just been di diagnosed with stage four lung cancer and it's metastasized, and so they've given him six months to live. So Nona is with her sister this morning, so we want to remember them in our prayers. We want to keep Jim Dunaway in our prayers and J.P. Lusby in our prayers. Uh, Sharon Nip, need to remember her as well. Yes, Jack? Marcy needs a spell. It's off concrete steps. It's laying on concrete flat. It busted her hip in two places. Marcy Steger? Is she going to have to have surgery? Yeah. Oh, well, I want to remember Marcy in your prayers too then. Uh, we have some visitors this morning, Harley and Jewel. So if you haven't had a chance to meet them, please uh, meet them. Good to have them with us this morning. So uh, let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Our most loving Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this beautiful Lord's Day. We're thankful, Father, for your love and your patience with us. We're thankful for your Son who was willing to suffer that ultimate sacrifice on the cross for our sins. And we pray, Father, that you would forgive us of our sins, recognizing that you love us, you have patience with us, and you desire that all mankind be saved. We're thankful, Father, for our visitors that come our way, for the encouragement that they bring to us. We're thankful, Father, for your word and the privilege we have of being able to study your word without fear of persecution. We're thankful, Father, for each and every member of this congregation. We recognize, Father, that we have some members that are in need of your healing power. We ask that you would be with our brother J.P. Lusby, be with our brother Jim Dunaway, and our sister Sharon Nip, and many of our elderly members are suffering from various age-related issues, and we ask that you would be with them. We also ask, Father, that you would be with our members that are mourning loved ones that have left this earth, and we ask that you would be with them, that they might be comforted. We ask also that you'd be with uh, Debbie's sister as her husband has been diagnosed with cancer, that he may not have much pain, that he may not suffer, and we ask that you would be with them at this time as they continue to uh, care for him. We're thankful, Father, that we can continue our study and the lessons of growing spiritually. We ask that you would be with us, that we might recognize exactly how you want us to grow and that we might do so in a manner that would be pleasing to thee. We ask also, Father, that you'd be with Marcy Steger as she has fallen and broken her hip and she's going to have surgery. We ask that you would be with the doctors that they might be able to make the right decisions to get her back on the road to recovery. These things we ask in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. All right, if you'll turn your Bibles to Romans, the 12th chapter, we're going to look at these scriptures up here. They're all up here. We'll look at these and what we're going to do in the closing of Growing Spirits Day is Look at these scriptures and ask ourselves, how do the following scriptures help me live up to my profession? And that was the closing of this uh, lesson six, living up to my profession. So look at Romans, the 12th chapter, verses one and two. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, how does that scripture help us live up to our profession?
gives you a command on how you're supposed to act in this world. Okay. Okay. We're not supposed to be conformed to this world. We're also supposed to live uh, holy and acceptable to God. The Levitical uh, book, that was the theme of there, be ye holy as I am holy. Peter said, be ye holy as I am holy. And that's exactly what we need to do if we're going to grow spiritually. How about Proverbs, the third chapter, verse 13? Proverbs 3.13 says, Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. How does that help us to grow spiritually? It takes away worry. It takes away worry? How do we gain wisdom? Through study. Bad experiences. That works. Rick's Rick is sad. They were up in Montana when this hailstorm came through, and his pickup's been destroyed, his roof has been destroyed, and sad, they come back and they find out about Debbie's brother-in-law, they find out, and their dog just passed away. So, bad experiences. Well, we had a wonderful trip. <laughs> when someone walks up to Rick and says, have a good day, he says, wait a minute. <laughs> Are you talking about before the storm or after the storm? <laughs> Persevering in the tribulation. Yeah, absolutely. So, obviously studying the scriptures helps us to find wisdom too. The more we study, the more wisdom we have. Look at Philippians, the third chapter, verse 14. Paul told the church at Philippi, he said, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. It's like she said, perseverance. It's perseverance? Yep. yep. That's right. Keeping our minds on the goal, focusing on things above and not on things on this earth. Yeah, okay. Colossians, the first chapter, verse 11. <coughs> Paul talking to the church of Colossae here. He says, Strength, Strengthen with all might according to His glorious power for all patience and long-suffering with joy. Well, that's a lot to ask. Do what? That's a lot to ask. <laughs> it is a lot to ask. Uh, but you know, the thing we have to keep in mind, God never asks us to do anything that we can't do. Uh, sometimes we wonder about that. And sometimes we forget about God until we have something tragic happen in our lives and all of a sudden we remember God. And the idea that Paul is trying to get across here is, is that we focus 100% of our effort in looking for the heavenly home uh, and do whatever we can to get there. And then we would have joy, obviously. Yes, Captain. Don't you think that when you go to the previous verse in verse 10 that it kind of goes back to the Romans verse that it's about walking worthy of the Lord and so it's giving you those examples as we go through to give you more information that you have the power of God behind you so that you can carry on and press through to those whatever challenge that faces you. That's a good point. You had that verse there. You want to read it, Kathy? Uh, so that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord to please Him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Okay. Thank you. That I should have had that in there too. So, good point. All right. Look at what the Hebrew writer says in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, in verse 1. And it's important to think about this verse because it begins with the word therefore. When you see that word therefore, it's always referring to something prior to that. Now what do you have in chapter 11 of Hebrews? Faith that overcomes. Faith. You have the faith chapter, if you will. You have all of these examples of men and women who live faithfully. And so in Hebrews 12.1, the Hebrew writer says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, 
Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which is so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Pretty clear, isn't it? When we have the kind of examples that we have in chapter 11, and we recognize the suffering that these men and women went through to serve God, our suffering is very minimal to the amount of suffering that they had. And yet they serve God, and so we can too. Jack? Sound like Paul wrote that verse. Well, I was talking to Harley before class. Uh, he asked who wrote the book of Hebrew. And I think it was the Apostle Paul. And when we study Hebrews, I'll give you some scriptures in there that would support the idea that it might be a, the Apostle Paul. What I don't understand is why he chose not to identify himself as the writer of this book or this letter at the very beginning. Humble. He's humble. But I think there's some good reasons why he didn't, and we'll discuss those when we get into that. All right, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Before you go there. Yes, Arthur. Um, uh, the Hebrew writer says, Let us lay aside every weight in which our snares us. Let us run with the endurance the race that is set before us. In verse 2 he says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So if we are looking unto Jesus to another race that we are running. It's the race that Jesus you knows set before us. And that race that we are to run until we get to the end. It's not a not a sprint, it's a marathon. You yeah. know, it's, it's and the apostle day. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. The apostle Paul told the Corinthian brethren too to run the race, didn't he? Right. To fight. Uh, the question that can always be asked is if you finish second in the race, you're the first loser. <laughs> and Paul is emphasizing the importance that we all should run the race to win the race. And that's what the Hebrew writer is saying here as well. So thank you, Arthel. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Again, you see that word, therefore. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. What do you think? It always accomplishes what it is written for. Always accomplish. Our goal in life should be to utilize the talents that God has given us, but to make every effort possible to increase our talents, to grow our talents, to do more for God each and every day of our lives. And, uh, and we should always ask, what more can we do? We should always ask. You remember the Apostle Paul asked that God give him opportunities to teach and to encourage. And we should ask that same thing, to ask to teach and encourage those who may not know Christ yet. And even those who are weak in the brethren to make every effort possible to teach them. Yes, Nola? And then I'll get we, you We uh, make the statement and we had already done that, uh, that we should be able to take whatever comes our way. That God's not going to give us more than we can handle. Exactly right. And yet, when it comes, it's like, why me? Yeah. Well, then why not us? Why not me? What makes me think that something isn't going to happen, that I'm going to have to deal with it? So we have a, a two-edged sword there. And isn't that what James is saying there? Count it all joy when you're tempted? Right. Because it makes you stronger? Obita? I was just going to say that as far as we have an opportunity every day to either pray with someone, encourage someone, and like you said, to add to our faith. And, you know, that's what I was going to say. Absolutely. Good point. Any other comment? All right, look at uh, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. I guess I cut it off there. I don't have it on the screen, but anyway, First John chapter one verse nine. John says, "If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness." You remember we talked about uh, in lesson four, 
or less than five hindrances to growing spiritually. <coughs> and one of the things we talked about is the fact that if we sin and we can't let it go, we've asked God for forgiveness, but we can't let it go, that it will all, oftentimes hinder us from growing spiritually uh, in the Word of God. Any comments? All right, last one. Galatians chapter 6, <laughs> verses 4 and 5. Paul talking to the church of Galatia. He said, But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. Any thoughts? My, my thought is that a lot of times, when I was younger, especially now, I don't care as much, um, was comparing myself to other people and um, t telling myself I'm not living up to everything I need to because I'm, I'm not doing as much as that person is. Yeah. Okay. And it, it, it's hard to examine that sometimes because um, each one of us have different challenges that we have to take care of in our, in our normal day, daily life. I mean, I was raising two children by myself, and so, uh, but I still wanted to measure up to all these other, you know, things that I feel like I need to measure up to. Now okay. it's like, when you get older, you start understanding a little bit, I don't, yeah. I don't care. <laughs> you know? walk a mile with another man's moccasins. That's true. You know, the thing is, when it says, let's examine our own work, and it says, for each one shall bear our own load, uh, there are things that all of us do as a Christian. It may be writing a card to someone who's sick. It may be visiting them. Uh, it may be doing some work around the building here. And... Uh, and we do that without expecting praise from other members of the congregation. We do that because we're seeking praise from God for what we do. And that's the idea. Uh, I put an email message out, or a Facebook message out Friday. I came up here and I was edging and trimming. Some of you may have seen it and everything. But after I got through edging, I always, because of, I'm not as young as I used to be. That makes me lie to somebody. It used to be I could come up here at the building and I could spend six hours mowing and edging and trimming and never stop. Now I have to stop. And so after I got through edging, I stopped. I got in the pickup. And I was checking my email messages, slumped down like this. Neighbor across the fence, he has two dogs. If you've ever been out that way, you hear the dog barking. But he gets it, and he's a big guy. And he wasn't fully dressed. I mean, he had sandals on and he had shorts. And he gets in his car, drives all the way around, and comes up behind me. And he comes walking up there asking me if I'm okay. Oh. <laughs> he literally thought I had a heart attack. And so I put on Facebook that experience and I said, you know, we need more people like that. Yeah. We need people that care for each other. And as Christians, we need Christians that care for each other, that will spend time visiting, sending cards, doing whatever we can to help each other. Uh, it may be that there's a, a member that's sick and, and they don't have anyone to help take care of their yard or their, their uh, dishes in the house or, or food. These things as Christians we need to do and not expect praise from anyone but God. And that's the idea here. Any other thoughts? Yes, Rick. You say we need more Christians like that. I'm just going to say we need to be more like that ourselves. And I look what? at that stuff and I regret some of the things that I haven't done or don't do that I really should. When you walk by somebody that may need help or something and we're busy, we're in a hurry, uh, a multitude of excuses I guess I could say yeah. and we need to take that as an example of this that's what we should be doing not Christians like somebody else right that's somebody else's job 
And I agree with you. And in the message I put in Facebook, I said we need more people like that. I didn't say we need more Christians. But the world would be much better off if we had a world full of people. See, like that, that puts it on somebody else. What yeah. I'm saying is we should, I like to say it a better, my way is I should be better doing things like that. Right. Okay. Nola? Taking care of the things that the Lord has blessed us with. That's something that a lot of people don't do. And I, I see someone who works so hard, they're doing, they work out of the house, they come home, they take care of their home, they take care of their children and husband. Uh, some people don't do anything. That's true. That's true. It is great. Uh, Chris. Everybody, everybody here knows how much Stephanie's been in and out of the hospital. And Sam and I both feel blessed because a lot of times that, you know, her being in and out of the hospital, we've had people reach out, hey, can I bring anything? Can we can do that? And to the point where it's like, no, we're fine. You know, we, we've got enough. And we do feel blessed as much people have reached out and they've offered to help to the point where we've got to say, thank you and help. We're fine. Okay, any other comments? I, I um, want to expand on what Nola said about, you know, uh, being thankful I, I I do feel like in my life having more thankfulness of what I have and knowing that God will always provide helps me to share with other people okay. because I, I'm very thankful for the skill set for you know my food clothing and shelter um, I'm very thankful for those things and I can share those and, and I know that whatever I share that God will still take care of me. I mean, I'm not going to overshare is what I'm trying to say. Because sure. I think sometimes we have a, a mentality that we only have a certain amount of stuff or a certain amount of this, and, and we, we can't let go of it because it won't come back. You know what I'm saying? So sure. uh, just knowing that he's always taking care of me. Always. All right, let's have some concluding thoughts here on the six lessons that we looked at growing spiritually as God desires of us. And I have them on the, up on the screen here. And number one is we must hold to biblical convictions that come from a correct understanding of God's Word. And if we're going to grow spiritually, that's pretty obvious. Number two, we must listen to and respond to our conscience within Ask ourselves, what more can we do for God? Number three, we must set priorities that help us grow. And number four, we must overcome hindrances to our spiritual growth. Number five, we must strive to live a life of purity and holiness. And number six, we must work hard at living up to our profession of Christ. And that's basically the six lessons we looked at here. Finally, we must ask ourselves, how well are we doing in growing spiritually? Will we keep on trying to follow Christ all the way to the end? That's the question that each one of us must ask ourselves if we're going to make it to heaven. We have to remember that the only way we're going to make it is by His saving grace and the forgiveness of sins. We're human beings. He knows that we will make mistakes, and so... Obviously, he is there for us. He desires that all mankind be saved. Any comments in concluding this study? <laughs>